guys welcome back to belly dancer diaries and to today's video which is one that's been requested a lot I'm really excited to be talking about and that is how do you start your own YouTube channel so if you're starting your own YouTube channel first of all congratulations it's really exciting I've been doing my YouTube channel belly dancer diaries for about a year and a half now um, there's so many things I love about it it's really fun it gets you engaged with a community that's passionate about what you're passionate about um, so all the best really exciting today I'm going to give you my top eight tips on how to start your channel Okay, number one is know your why. This is the most important because it is a lot of work starting a YouTube channel. So you want to know your purpose with it, your goals with it, and why you are doing it. For me, I started for a few reasons. Um, firstly, because I was seeing my students every week, but they didn't have a tool to practice at home. So through Belly Dancer Diaries, they've now got lots of tutorials. For me, that's been really rewarding because they can come to my class, I see their improvements week by week, accelerate even more because of belly dancer diaries um, another reason for me is that belly dancing is my passion if you haven't seen my tutorials and know that already um, and if you're not sure about what your passion is I have a video all about that I'll link that below too so you can check that out but you might have many different reasons to start your YouTube it might be that you want to start it to complement a business that you're running you might want to use it for promotion in that way um, or you might want to connect with a different audience or connect with people who have the same passion as you but if you know why you want to start it then you can work your goals towards reaching that based on your purpose okay number two um, this is choose your name based on search engine optimization and relevance um, so if you have a name that is clear easy to say easy to spell and tells your audience exactly what your channel is about it's much better because it means that when people are searching for your channel, say if someone's searching for belly dancing tutorials, the name Belly Dancer Diaries will come up a lot more likely rather than a name like Elisa of my life, for example. No one's gonna search my name, but if they're interested in belly dancing, they will search for belly dancing. Make sure that it's something easy to spell as well because when people are sharing it or when people are looking it up, um, that's going to be a lot easier for people to find and share too. Based on this too, you want to try and link your social media accounts with your YouTube channel. Um, so you can link through Facebook. I know for dancing, Facebook's a really good one. Um, Instagram as well, Twitter, Snapchat, um, depending on your audience, using those tools too, so that you can really share and engage with your videos. Okay, tip number three is to schedule your videos in advance. So when you go onto YouTube, you can upload a video. If you've never uploaded a video before, they have a little drop down box um, which says, oh, you want to make this video private, you want to make it public, or you want to schedule it in advance. So I always use schedule in advance. Um, I upload my videos 7 a.m. every Tuesday morning, Melbourne time. Um, and there's a few reasons why it's really good to do this. Firstly, it keeps you committed to your videos if your audience know that you're going to post 7 a.m. every Tuesday um, then it will help you work towards your goals if you know when you're scheduling as well to meet that deadline um, as well as that it can help with YouTube algorithm so if you're posting regularly um, then it'll go up too but one reason why I first started scheduling when I began um, was because I wasn't sure how people were going to react to my videos and I knew I really wanted to do it but I wasn't sure how I'd be able to keep doing it especially if I got negative feedback um, so for me think about four months in advance I had all my videos planned so that I knew what I was going to be posting about and yes yeah, some of that changed based on feedback from people um, but having it all there meant that if someone was going to write a really horrible comment and that can happen when you first start um, then at least I would be committed to keep posting and keep working on my YouTube channel okay this links into tip number four which is be thick skinned so i know whenever you are doing something creative the biggest hindrance is your own self-doubt and also doubt from the people who are closest to you. Um, I have a friend who started a YouTube channel and she was really funny, she still is really funny. Um, she's a comedian and someone wrote a really horrible comment um, on one of her videos and it meant that she didn't really want to post anymore, which is understandable. 
but you have to have confidence in yourself and confidence in the message that you are bringing out to people. So this links to tip number one as well, knowing why you are doing it. Because if you do the why, if you know the why, then that means that when people write nasty things on your YouTube comments, um, you won't be as affected by it. I know it's natural for us to take all the negative feedback and not listen as much to the positive feedback, um, but you really have to be able to have confidence and just keep pushing through. When I first started, I was super excited about having my first video. I tried to edit it nicely and everything and I was showing my family and someone in my family said, ah, oh, the video is nice, but the content, no one is gonna watch that. Um, so a year and a half later, I've had over 7,000 hours of people watching on my channel. So obviously that person was wrong. I could have easily just listened to their feedback and decided not to do that or done something else that would have been more popular but wasn't my passion. Um, so you have to stay true to yourself but have confidence in yourself too. And really try and link with those people who share your passion, share your dreams and listen to them when they give you positive feedback. There are a lot of trolls out there on YouTube. You're always going to get negative comments, but just understand that that's not necessarily because your videos are bad. You can have the best videos. You can be the best at presenting on camera, um, but you're still going to get negative feedback. And it's usually because um, those people who are giving you the negative feedback aren't happy in themselves. Okay. Tip number five, which is also related to this is community. It's all about community. This is one of the things I love most about YouTube. I've been able to connect with dancers from all over the world that I wouldn't have gotten to meet otherwise. Um, so use that community. It's really beautiful to be able to connect with all those people. But in the same line, it means that you're not just creating a video and then putting it up there and not worrying about it. You are listening to feedback and also giving other people feedback on their videos. You're sharing things that you really like, that you find and being part of that with social media as well. Okay, tip number six um, is about filming and setup. So I know that it can be expensive to start with all your equipment when you're first starting your own YouTube channel. When I first began, I was borrowing my cousin's camera. Um, I had a lot of comments saying that sound was terrible, that the setup of the room was terrible, um, that the lighting was terrible, um, but you do get better over time and you can invest in that equipment over time. So I'll put some links below to the camera I use. Um, pretty quickly, I bought some lights off Amazon just really cheap ones but they made a big difference I'll link those below too um, so it's important if you can get really nice lighting um, have nice audio and have a nice setup as well um, these are things that I'm constantly working on and getting better at over time which is my tip number seven which is that you will get better over time. Um, so you're never going to be perfect at it. You're never going to be perfect at presenting. You're never going to have perfect video editing. Um, it's never going to be perfect, but the sooner you start, the more experience you're going to have and the sooner you're going to build up those skills. When I look at my first videos, I think, oh my goodness, this is just terrible in all those aspects, not just technically, but also the way I was presenting things. Um, but I'm a lot better at it now because I have had that prep practice. So it's like any skill. YouTube is like any skill. You get better at it over time. So the sooner you start, the better you're going to get sooner. Um, so keep that in mind. And tip number eight is um, to ask experts. So I know there's a lot of things that I haven't covered in this video. So if you have other questions, please write them down below. I will answer them as best as I can. Um, and ask other experts that you know as well. So if you have a friend who's really good at social media, ask them about that. If you have a friend who's really good at video editing, ask for advice because a lot of people have done it before you and they are there to help you. So if you are starting your own YouTube channel, congratulations, please make sure you link it below so that we can all help each other out and see each other's channels. Um, if you have any other feedback or comments, you can also write them below or DM me so I can answer them and even do them in another video. And if you found this video useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe, especially if you're a dancer and want more belly dancing or other tips on how to work YouTube. And as always, happy dancing for my dancers out there.